There are two roads to a football title. One, outscore everybody. Two, prevent the other team from scoring. The Houston Oilers, with an opportunistic young defense, gave up fewer points than any team in American Football League history. The pass interception was their home run. They had to play defense. Their offense was eighth in a nine-team league. Their quarterback, Pete Beathard, didn't put on a Houston uniform till midseason. He adapted quickly. Their halfback, Woody Campbell, was a rookie, picked 242nd in the college draft, but he developed into a star. And unknown in 1966, fullback Hoyle Granger became the league's second best rusher. Thus a devastating defense, a late developing offense provided Houston with their Eastern Division title. The Oakland Raiders traveled a somewhat different route to their title. They played great defense. They dropped enemy quarterbacks a league record 67 times. Very few teams could run on their huge front four. Or pass against their cat quick secondary. But Oakland's strongest point was their offense, guided by player of the year, Darrell LaMonica. In his first year as a starting quarterback, LaMonica led the league in passing. He tossed for 30 touchdowns. Strangely enough, his favorite receiver was the fullback, Hewitt Dixon, who is also a punishing runner. Pairing with Dixon was Pete Banizak, a young bullish halfback from Miami who took over when all league Clem Daniels broke his leg. The combination was deadly enough to score more points than any team in the league as Oakland won an AFL record 13 games in the Western Division crown. But when the best of the East meets the best of the West, the results are one-sided. Why? Oakland's new Coliseum fills to capacity. More than 53,000 fans enter the modern stadium, most of them confident that the Raiders will win their first American Football League title. The mood is festive. The Raiders have won 10 in a row, including a late season 19 to seven victory over the Houston Oilers. The Oakland players radiate confidence as they warm up. After beating every team in the league at least once, the Raiders seem relaxed and well prepared. Head coach Johnny Rauch is counting on his young passer, Daryl LaMonica. Houston's quarterback is Pete Beathard. 
who, like La Monica, is finishing his first season as a starter. On these two somewhat untested arms will depend much of the outcome of this eighth American Football League championship game. Our entire Oakland Raider uh, team was uh, well uh, prepared for the ball, ball game. We were very confident, and especially our defense. We felt that uh, we could hold her uh, running to a minimum and that we could hold them uh, 10 points or less. We knew that if we could stop Grand Jay, who is one of the best fullbacks in our league, that we could contain him pretty well. And how they stop Grand Jay. Every time number 32 touches the pigskin, there are black shirts to set him down. Granger averaged more than five yards per carry during the season. His average for this game is slightly more than one yard per carry. By simply overpowering the Houston blockers, the Raiders limit the Oiler fullback to a sparse 19 yards gain. Halfback Woody Campbell fared no better. He was not permitted his heralded long game. The entire Houston running attack, which led the league in 1967, was handcuffed with a mere 38 yards. Darrell LaMonica continues to explain the Oakland strategy. The real big problem was that if we could contain uh, Pete Bethard and keep Pete uh, from scrambling out of the pocket too much and then containing uh, the passing game. Again, the problem is successfully solved. Blanket coverage in the secondary. Pressure from the pass rush. They are Oakland's trademark. But the pass rush is not just to force a hurried throw. It also is designed to keep Pete Bethard from scrambling, to pin him inside the defensive ends and make him throw from a pocket or not to let him throw at all. When he does break free, the Raiders are there to smother any further game. Or make Bethard sorry he passed in the first place. The strategy works. The Oiler offense is neutralized. The league's top quarterback is ready to go to work. Our game plan was basically to uh, to experiment a little bit. Uh, we felt that we could run on them as well as throw on them. And of course, uh, I uh, probed a little bit to find the weaknesses that uh, I did find. I found uh, uh, to our left side, their defensive right side, we did find some weaknesses off tackle and on our, our sweeps to the left side. So quarterback never bites the hand uh, that feeds him, so I stayed at Proving LaMonica's strategy correct, Oakland's fine runners found plenty of room over Houston's defensive right side. With rookie guard Gene Upshaw, number 63, leading the way, Oakland's power sweeps battered Houston's right side for valuable yards. But there is more to LaMonica's analysis. We worked their middle over and uh, primarily our left side. We also had plays going to our right side as well, but uh, we felt that if I could establish a running game early in, in the game, that we would be fairly successful. The strategy is complete. The Raiders have their blueprint for victory. The record crowd joins coaches Johnny Roush of Oakland and Wally Lim of Houston, sharing the tenseness of the opening kickoff. The winner goes to Miami to represent the American Football League in the Super Bowl. The loser goes home. Oakland's Dave Grayson puts the Raiders in Houston territory. Now the probing begins. LaMonica sends his fullback, Hugh Red Dixon, into the middle of the Houston line. On second and six, LaMonica tests the Oilers' strength, their pass defense. Fred Bolitnikoff is there for nine. 
At the Houston 31, the Raider quarterback continues to search for a weakness. The throw is incomplete. Oakland's probing offense can't penetrate any further. Former Oiler George Blanda tries a 38-yard field goal that sails off to the right. Still early in a scoreless game, Houston gains momentum. Pete Beathard, it's Woody Campbell for five. Beathard wants to keep the drive moving. He stays with his passing game. Charlie Frazier slips free for a first down on the open 42. But the Houston delight is short lived. Beathard begs to rookie Alvin Reed, who appears to have another first down when Oakland linebacker Dan Connor steals the ball. The theft seems to dampen Houston's spirit. Another look at the same key play shows how Connors tackles the football. The daring maneuver pays off for the Raiders. And the Oilers' first scoring thrust is wiped out. Daryl LaMonica confidently begins to take charge. A bullet to Billy Cannon, who's wide open, gobbles up 21 yards. Raider coach Johnny Roush watches intently as the Oilers nearly match Oakland's earlier break. LaMonica's aerial is almost intercepted by Oiler rookie Ken Houston. A second look reveals the Houston safety has possession with a clear field ahead, but he drops the ball. If the rookie is upset, imagine how his coach feels. Oakland's George Blanda salvages three points from the drive. Boosting the Raiders to a 3-0 advantage after one period. If any quarter of any championship game started out with a bigger explosion, it has gone unnoticed. On the first play of the second period, a simple end sweep by Hewitt Dixon quickly becomes the longest run from scrimmage in AFL title game history. 69 yards to the final chalk mark. Another look at this record-setting play, a last-second decision by quarterback LaMonica, who recalls the situation. As the game progressed, I did notice that they were overloading when I went into a spread, as we call an east formation, where I take and put both my outside receivers to the wide side of the field or the strong side of the field. I did this, and they overshifted, and uh, I got up to the line of scrimmage, and uh, they were giving us what we call a strong dog. They were bringing their strong backer, uh, Webster, and also uh, their middle linebacker. And so when I saw this, that I autobiased out of the play that I had and, and called an end sweep. Uh, to their weak side or back into the short side of our field. We pack everybody down in the middle, we cut off their pursuit, and Pete Banizak made the real big key block on the play. He had the lead block, he chopped down their uh, linebacker. Gene Upshaw, our left guard, came out clean and turned it around. After that, it was just clear sailing for Stuart Dixon, who is a great runner and showed his speed. The Raiders shocked the Oilers with a 10-0 lead. Three more times, the Raider defense chokes off Houston drives, and Oakland regains possession the third time for keeps. Less than two and a half minutes to play in the half. The Raiders test the weakness they have found on Houston's defensive right side. Pete Banizak fights to near midfield. Then Dixon dances through white jerseys to the Oiler 41. A 
a little more than a minute till halftime. Again, Dixon. Again, Houston's right side. And again, this time, Pete Banaszak carries to the Oilers 17, where it's fourth and one with time running out. Now is the time to dig deep for that game breaker, the one play the enemy is not expecting. 18 seconds, and here comes Coach Rauch's decision. A fake field goal with LaMonica rolling out. Dave Kasurik is wide open, chased only by a Houston tackle, George Rice. Oiler coach Wally Lim calls it a key play. Darrell LaMonica tells how it happened. I felt that the coach made a very wise decision in saving the play for the time that uh, we did use it because it was a big surprise play and uh, of course Webster had overcommitted himself. He was coming in to block the field goal if he could and uh, he got out of position which allowed me to roll and get to the outside fairly clear. They just couldn't recover in time to uh, get to Dave Kasurik who I believe uh, made his first reception of the year. A big reception for seven points and uh, it gave us a tremendous advantage at halftime. It's Oakland, 17 to nothing. The Oilers know they must begin to make their move as the third period opens. Rookie Zeke Moore, the AFL's top man at kickoff returns, sets out on his specialty. But Dwayne Benson slams into Moore, popping the ball loose. Ken Herrock recovers for Oakland on the Houston 29. Fate has dealt the Oilers another disastrous blow. When a team is down, go for broke is LaMonica's theory after the Houston fumble. He unloads the bomb for Billy Cannon. It fails to explode. Back to the power sweep. Pete Banizak plays his blocks well, runs through a clothesline for 14 yards. Quarterback LaMonica is confident of his halfback. Pete Banizak is a very, very strong runner. He never gives up. He will use his blockers to the best advantage. An awful lot like Paul Horning, Green Bay Packers of the past. Uh, I felt that he was very similar, where he could set up his blocking and cut back against the grain and use them to the best advantage for him. From the Houston 7, LaMonica fakes to Banizak, then scrambles for a first down on the Oiler 2. An Oakland score here, and Houston's dreams of a title could vanish. Number 3 sizes up the Oiler defense. Then behind wedge blocking, LaMonica pushes himself into the end zone. The Raider balance is working to the tune of a 24 to nothing lead. Darrell LaMonica knows the Oilers must alter their attack. We knew that they would be putting the ball in the air. And of course, this was a big advantage as far as our defense was concerned. By doing this, it took away one of their real strengths, and that was their running game as far as their offense was concerned. And they had to go to their passing game, and then that let our defense pretty much tee off and play a little more reckless football and enable our uh, defensive secondary to anticipate what they were going to do. The Raiders capitalize on the advantage. Houston goes nowhere. Oakland plays ball control. Banizak zips up the middle to the Houston 41. Another look reveals Banizak's power and balance. He runs for 116 yards in this game. Leading 24 to nothing, LaMonica isn't content to simply stay on the ground. An aerial to Billy Cannon winds up on the Houston 32. A little more trickery with flanker Fred Belitnikoff, the intended hero. But Houston's Don Floyd is not fooled. 
the Oiler defense seems to be bracing for one final stand. La Monica is chased out of the pocket. The result, an incomplete pass on a third and 13 situation. The AFL top scorer, George Blanda, hurries in to boot a 40-yard field goal. The Raider margin is nearly insurmountable, 27 to nothing after three quarters. Daryl LaMonica knows how Blanda enjoys beating his former mate. Same time that you do get traded from one ball club, it gives you an added incentive to go back and want to be at your best against that particular team and to beat that team. This was the case with George Blanda, not only during league play, where he kicked four field goals to beat Houston, but also in the championship game where he again kicked four field goals to help us defeat Houston in the real big game. George has a tremendous leg. He's a great kicker, but even more so, he's a great competitor. I can't stress this point enough on George because he plays only to win. And, uh, of course, in football, I think in anything, this is the only way to play it. He's uh, always in there, and he'll give you 100% at all times. Blanda's four field goals personally outscore the Oilers. In the final period, Houston mounts a drive. Sid Blank sweeps to the Raider 39. Rookie linebacker George Webster urges his club to score. Pete Bethard has the same idea, but it takes a pass interference penalty against Oakland's Dave Grayson at the five to set up the Oilers. Receiver Alvin Reed thought he had a touchdown, but that comes on the next play. Bethard flips to Charlie Frazier for the tally. The Oilers have a long way to go, trailing 30 to seven. Victory is just riding out the clock for Daryl LaMonica, Pete Banizak, and the Western Division champion. But that competitive spirit spurs LaMonica on to try for more points. Banizak continues to find running room on Houston's right side. The Oiler 12, La Monica counters to the defender's strength, their left side. Bill Miller is open for the score. A repeat of the touchdown shows how Oakland's two wide receivers cross. Fred Belitnikov split wide to the right with Bill Miller inside him. A perfect pass means six more points for the Raiders. As the seconds die into the Oakland night, the dream that brought Houston from last place in 1966 to first in 1967 ends abruptly, 40 to seven. The Raiders' blueprint for victory is a success as they enjoy their initial American Football League championship. For Oakland, a record-breaking season ends with a thrill, a title, and a trip. I think if anyone in the AFL has a chance to beat the Packers, it's definitely the Raiders, especially with a strong defensive team that they have. And I have all the faith in the world in La Monica. There are no getting us up. We'll be up, I'll tell you. It was, uh, we're that type of ball club. We've got a lot of pride. We're just going to go out and do our best. And, uh, Try to stay in the park with them. Hope they don't run us out of the park. Any professional football team can beat any other professional football team on any given day. And Oakland never lets down, and they always rise to the occasion in the second half, so I say they're going to win. Well, I think the Raiders can beat the Packers any day. The Raiders will win the Super Bowl, there's no doubt about it. I think we'll show up for the game, all right, I hope. The Raiders are going to get killed.
Raiders are going to smear the Packers. The Raiders are going to win the Super Bowl. So we play like we did today. We uh, King Kong and 10 Gorillas can't beat us. So we'll be all right against the Packers.